So let's press play and see what happens. <laughs> Hi guys. Hello everyone. I'm so happy to be back. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of healing on my own. Um, it's been a bit of a crazy summer for me personally. I hope that you are safe and protected, but I felt a lot of energetic shifts and upgrades. So I'm really, really happy to be preparing this pick a card reading for you guys at midnight. This is another of my really loved midnight healing sessions. So I did one, I think a month ago regarding healing maternal wounds. Um, and this one is the other side healing paternal wounds so we're going to be looking at fathers your relationship to your father um, i'll try to read with the help of tarot try to understand how your father was um, keep in mind this is a general reading okay it might not apply to all of you but it could apply to some of you there might be some archetypal general characteristics that might apply to some of you and then I will try to give you, of course, advice, help, um, ways in which you can empower yourself, ways in which you can overcome whatever challenges you might have experienced in a relationship with your father. I know that a lot of my viewers are women um, or people who identify as women or men who have a very strong relationship to their anima. That is the Jungian archetype uh, that shows the female part of a man's soul. Um, women have that as well. We have a male part of our soul called the animus. But I'm not here to talk about Jungian archetypes. There are so many interesting videos out there. Feel free to Google them. Feel free to, you know, look them up on YouTube. I'm here to talk to you about tarot and oracle. <laughs> I'm kind of like thinking what's happening i feel very chill i'm in a very chill vibe and it's so beautifully silent at this time of night mostly because um in my neighborhood there are a lot of children and it's very very hard to connect and do this kind of deeply intuitive work when there are children screaming and you know laughing and smashing things around so it's been very difficult for me this summer to do readings and that's why i kind of took a step back i'm not sure if other tarot readers. I know a lot of tarot readers watch my channel, so I'm not sure if that resonates with you, but um, yeah, in any way, I just want you guys to feel good, to feel soothed, to feel safe and calm. This is a safe space I've created here for you with the help of incense, with the help of light, with the symbols that I have around me. I've summoned here the influences of Archangel Raphael, the Angel of Healing, Archangel Gabriel, the angel of communication and the mediator between our earthly plane and the divine plane and Archangel Michael, of course, the angel that I work with, the angel that is deeply protective and helps defend us against negative energies. So this is a very chilled session. I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to, you know, work on it i'm just going to film it i'll put the timestamps down below and yeah i just want to take my time slow and steady wins the race so i'll timestamp this portion as well if you want to skip over it and just go straight to your pile i do feel very cold speaking of slow and steady to talk about um Capricorn energy. We are dealing with paternal issues and who better than Capricorn to govern the energy of the father. Um, so Capricorn, as we all know, is a sign that is ruled by Saturn and Saturn is the archetypal father of the gods. He was actually, um, well, in Greek mythology, he was trying to or attempted to eat his children um, and among them Uranus rebelled against him and managed to kind of overthrow him by escaping being eaten by his own father. There are a lot of many other uh, famous stories such as um, the story of Oedipus and how he became king by uh, marrying his mother and killing his father. Uh, that is a Greek mythological tale that Freud then took and reinterpreted in his Oedipus complex and then later on in his Electra complex to try to explain to us why is there enmity between fathers and especially their sons. So there is this competition between fathers and sons and no matter how difficult we think as women 
our relationships with our own fathers are. Um, I do think that also psychologically uh, it has been explained that men have a much tougher um, kind of situation and relationship with their fathers. I'm not a man so I can't speak for them but that's what I've been reading and what I've been kind of like digesting through, through my education. But I want to talk mostly because I know a lot of you are women so I want to talk mostly about the link between father Eternal energy, cosmic, the cosmic father represented by Saturn, the planets of limits, restriction, effort, karma, paying back your dues, responsibility. He's the old grandfather of the zodiac. He's the one that comes to, you know, wake you up from your party to remind you that you have bills to pay <laughs> and a tax return form to fill in. It's not at all a comfortable energy. People that are born under the rulership of Capricorn do not have easy lives in general. They have a very stoic energy, an energy that is a lot about, it's kind of like they have an energy that limits them and they have to fight against that energy and push it with their intentions, with their words, with their actions and with the power of their emotions which are not so readily available to them because there is a lot of fear. Saturn brings up issues regarding fear. Psychologically speaking as well, um, it has been said by attachment theory that the mother is the one that um, nurtures the baby and you know feeds you and teaches you the basics of self-care and self-love and the father is the one that helps you connect from the private world that the mother has created for you it helps bridge the private world with the public sphere so the father is kind of like the first figure of authority that we grow up with that the person that we try to please the person that we love the person that we want to show our achievements to um, in a society that continues to associate men and masculine energy with achievement so this is why fathers are considered to be the bridge between the private realm of the family and the public world world of social achievement, public status, um, look at me, ambitious, you know, uh, diploma collections. Um, it's related as well this energy with your level of self-confidence, self-expression and how much money you earn because fathers do instill in us a very strong sense of self-worth when they are good enough, okay? Because no father is ideal, no mother is ideal um, and even though we might blame our parents for whatever has happened to us, we will become, hopefully, if we're blessed and lucky enough, parents ourselves and we will understand how difficult it is to actually work with those energies because when you bring a child into the world, you bring karma into the world, you bring a different astrological energetic pack, you bring a cosmic gateway, you don't even know what kind of identity or occult personality type your child has. Well, if you dabble in astrology and witchcraft, you might preempt it, but it is a whole world that you bring into being, okay? You bring something from your ancestral lineage, wounds that need to be opened up just to be healed. It's a lot of different elements. But coming back to Capricorn energy, why am I tempted to speak about it? I know that this is in a flow, but you know, I'm just really enjoying it and I'm gonna go with it. If you don't enjoy this part, feel free to skip over it. I just feel like this energy is pouring out of me with this full moon in Pisces and I want to give this to you. I want to offer this to you for those of you that are up for these kind of conversations. But I think that Capricorn energy is also quite grounding and quite soothing. Um, we have Jupiter, the god of luck, uh, the planet, uh, one of the biggest planets in our solar system that is periodically hit by um, cosmic debris and comets. Without Jupiter, we would be constantly battered by the comets that Jupiter in all its might and its all in beauty is defending us from. So Jupiter is our protector, our, our blessed energy. Whatever you have Jupiter in your charts, that's a constant source of blessings. But right now we have Jupiter in a slightly a detrimental position. It's in Capricorn, which means that it's kind of like blessings are blocked by karma. Okay, so this year all the while Jupiter is in Capricorn, we only get the blessings that we deserved and that we have worked for. We do not get extra this year. <laughs> it's, it's 
this is how Jupiter and Capricorn energy works. It is slow and steady and you only get blessings if you go into this energy of taking things very slowly, of um, putting in the effort, of setting an intention and working day by day to sustain it. Last year when Jupiter was in Sagittarius, we manifested things like this, especially those of us that had Sagittarius placements in our chart. But uh, this year, hard work is required to manifest. Hard work is required to feel a deep connection to spirit. Hard work is required to feel optimistic. It's really difficult at the moment to feel optimistic with the South Node in Sagittarius, the North Node in, well, the sign of Judas, Gemini, right? So it's the sign of... I want to touch it, to feel it, to believe it. I'm not just going to believe it just because you tell me to. Yeah, so it's very difficult to believe in a higher connection. It's difficult to connect to spirit. Um, it's difficult to feel optimistic and to feel like things are just working out for you as smoothly as they did in previous years. It is the year of the great deconstruction as well. So flowing with this energy, we also have Pluto and Saturn in the signs of Capricorn. That's a very underworld, kind of creepy kind of energy. Makes me think of Hades uh, pulling Persephone into the underworld to make her his, um, to make, yeah, her his wife. <laughs> Sorry, I got a mix up in the gender pronouns there. You guys know English is not my second language and when I I've been living for a while in a non-English speaking environment and my unconscious is trying to bring in Romanian, German and French words into my syntax, so I speak very strangely. But I also have Saturn, by the way, in the third house, so if you resonate with me, be very gentle with your mind and with how you speak. Take it slowly, okay, because there are obstacles and limits at every pace. So Saturn and Pluto, Saturn is this energy of limitation, Pluto is the energy of transformation and stagnation that leads to an abrupt volcanic moment. Um, so it's kind of like we have at the moment blessings that we are only able to access if we put in the hard work and we overcome limits and obstacles by personally transforming. It's a very intense energy and I could feel it, the shifts throughout the day. I have it in my third house, as I said, you could have it in your second house of money and so forth. Uh, you could have it in your se seventh house of love, commitments and the shadow self. You could have it in the eighth house, the really spooky a cult house of death taxes um, you know, trust and power right so whatever is taking place in your chart at the moment we have so much concentrated energy in that area of life and one thing that unites us all at the moment is our connection to our father our connection to our father figure and this inner father that we all hold within is then being projected outwards into how we handle society at the moment and society and its institutions the way it is shaped at the moment it's been shaped for thousands of years based on patriarchal principles this means the rule of man over woman um, the rule of reason rationality speed achievement competitiveness uh, personal gain over intuition receptivity nurturing slowing down caring deeply for our environment these are not things that are valued these are things that are poorly paid these are things that are not basically um, we don't build monuments for motherhood as much as we build monuments for people that died in the war serving their country right think about that um, our relationship to our father also affects our relationship to other institutions such as um, our relationship to doctors, to hospitals, to the world of medicine at the moment. We see the tense relationship right now with the pressure to try to provide vaccines for um, a nation that's being affected by this current virus um, and how poorly equipped certain hospitals in certain parts of the world are and how, you know, this institution, this paternal institution that's supposed to make us better, make us well, is failing a lot of us. Our relationship to housing is really important at the moment. So many homeless people, yet we are building so much. Like the, the world has been trembling since Pluto entered in Capricorn in 2008. The world has been trembling with construction. We have urban sprawl, gentrification, but at the same time, 
even though we have more spaces to live in, people, um, increasingly more and more people are on the streets being homeless. So again, where is the father kind of failing us? Where is the father replenishing us? In other areas, we are progressing quite beautifully. We see what NASA is doing at the moment, sending ships, you know, sending um, Voyager probes, sending um, all sorts of um, little robots out into the cosmos to try to um, help us gain a better picture of how the planets are working, right? Um, in certain countries, indeed, rulers and leaders are protecting and defending their nations. Um, there's been an increase in maternity and paternity leaves in certain countries. Um, Scotland has been taking some steps to try to provide mothers with packs, for example, for women that have just given birth, while uh, for example, Canada as well has been running some really interesting um, multicultural um, policies as well. But in other countries, there is war and there is a lack of, you know, the father, the father, the institution of the state, right? The government is failing its people. And in the worst cases, it's actually trading its people for uh, weapons or, you know, uh, trafficking its, its people. It's really, really some dire, dire circumstances in the world. So I'm in no way kind of saying that one nation is better than another, but I'm just saying that, you know, we have some progress in some isolated areas and then in other areas it's just a fight for life and survival and it's you know to the bone we get to the bone to the point where you can't even have clear drinking water um, and at the moment with the pandemic it's very hard even to breathe right so I don't want to scare you guys and I'm sorry I got a little bit too in-depth into this I am by training a sociologist um, not only an astrologer and a tarot reader but I do feel like you know, this was the purpose of this channel. This was why I initially started it. I wanted, that's why you see my face. I wanted to talk to you because it is a social interaction. Um, and I wanted to combine my knowledge from all of these three different areas and to see what happens, you know, see what happens when I combine um, science with this artistic way of tapping into the unconscious that the tarot and oracle cards provide with um, astronomical calculations that are provided by astrology and, you know, the beautiful art of interpreting these astronomical movements. Okay, so I think I'm going to close this introduction here. It's been pretty long if I look at the time. But I'm going to show you now the options that you have here today. So um, this is going to be about healing paternal wounds if you skipped over the introduction. And I'm going to show you the choices. So we have here for group number one, I have this memory stick. You can't see what it says here because the label has been torn, but it used to say survivor. That might resonate for some of you. So that's pile one. Pile 2 has the safety pin. Pile 3 has this pair of sunglasses. And Pile 4 has this hand wash, hand gel, sanitizer. Yeah. It's been ubiquitous nowadays, right guys? I already draw um, the oracle cards. I'm going to just shuffle and pull live the tarot cards for you. Um, I felt called to do so. And I also meditated on each of your piles in preparation for this reading. I just felt like it was really, really important for me to do that. I don't know why I felt called to meditate on these piles. So I got some insights as to the energy of each of these piles and woof, do I feel cold to actually say that there is a very strong pulsation in my sacral chakra. That's the seat of our clearing emotional baggage of uh, Swadhisthana, right? So this is about that orange light that is the light of the womb, the light of safety and protection. And usually fathers traditionally are associated with the role of the protector. The person that holds you very strongly in their loving arms, right? And if you are on their shoulder, you are standing on the shoulder of a giant. You can take on any situation, right? So if your father is a good father, you have this very strong sense of, I can do anything in my life, right? I can tackle on any issue. I am brave and I'm full of confidence. 
So group one, this is for those of you that were drawn to the memory stick, the survivor stick. So I did mention previously, I, I went into a meditation in preparation for your group. And while I was meditating, I saw this image of a head floating in darkness. And I was trying to connect to spirit and try to understand what am I being shown here? Why just the head floating? And this head was a very white, like the, the head of a white older man, very pale with blue eyes, piercing blue eyes. But it was just the head floating about. And then I saw the head of a black man uh, who was a little bit overweight and looked very like his eyes were bulging with anxiety, very, um, he looked very anxious and I was trying to understand why is why is spirit showing me just the head the more I kind of looked into it the more I saw nothingness so what made me think is that my first intuitive hit was we're talking here we're dealing here with the father who is absent this is a father who you know only through memories right you keep certain memories of your father certain bits and pieces and you hold on to those because those are those little fragments in your memory compose the image of your father as you got to know him so you got to know your father most of you this applies only for those of you who chose this pile if this doesn't resonate please shift to another pile but i feel that this is important for some of you i can feel my sacral chakra rumbling there's a deep, deep wound here in the sacral chakra regarding trust, trusting men, mostly because your father was potentially absent or he left you very early on, progressing into the other realm, right? He went into the 5D. But let's see right now what the cards have to say for group number one. Yeah. Oh my God. So we have the hanged man, it's a bit of a blocked energy here. Oh goodness, one second. As I said one second and I did like this, it was 2222. This is a really important angel number. Please make sure to Google that up because that's your synchronicity for this reading. So I feel that you're being protected. You are definitely protected, my lovely group one. So let me show you the tarot cards that I got for you. So we have here the hanged man. And then we had the Seven of Swords. This was followed by the Three of Wands. And the very painful Ten of Swords. So what we have here is the pain of having to live constantly suspended. Almost as if I'm getting kind of a Two of Swords energy as well. For some of you, this is... A father that you had to recreate through your mind you got to know your father through your mind through the memories as I said earlier through overthinking through wondering how he could have been if only he would have been here if only I got more time with him if only um, I could have talked to him more got to know him more so I feel that for a lot of you there is already kind of like I feel like the energy is moving to my heart chakra so I feel that there is a pain here a pain that oh god i think for some of you this is gonna make you cry i'm really sorry i don't want to trigger you but you are here to heal paternal wounds and healing does imply a release of emotions okay so if i'm able to facilitate the release of emotions i'm very grateful for that but please just release it and don't dwell on the pain let it flow out of you because i feel that there is a lot of pain here a pain that because of your overthinking because you didn't have your father's physical presence in your life, it felt as if being caught up in the prison of your mind and having to try to understand what those bits and pieces felt like, it's almost like you tried to embody your father through the thoughts and the memories that you had. And that posed a lot of pressure and tension on your mind. I feel like some of you actually couldn't remember your father's name sometimes or his favorite color or how he tasted or smelled or um and by tasted i mean maybe you kissed him on the cheek don't don't get it twisted right so 
I feel like some of you would will wake up or would have these moments when, huh, how did my father feel like? Oh God, I forgot that. How could I forget that? And then you would get into this, you, you would spin, you know, your mind would spin because you were thinking, you were hanging on to the details. The details composed your father and losing any detail or forgetting the detail meant almost like betraying your father. So a lot of you kind of kept yourself in a very strange state where it's almost as if you were quite afraid of connecting to other men because you felt like you might betray the memory of your father or you felt as if you could only know men through bits and pieces because to a large extent our relationship to our father unconsciously, unconsciously, I'm not talking about consciously, consciously we can have a very resolved, very forgiving situation with our father but unconsciously there might still be some things there that connect deeply to our childhood past, some parts that it, it's even hard for us to become aware of, we only become aware of them when we are triggered, when we meet certain men or certain situations in life that remind us of that. Some of us could even meet women with very strong masculine energies that remind us of our fathers and I don't know why but I feel the need to shift maybe you need to shift your energy as well maybe you're sitting in I feel like some of you could be having some back pain here and you're sitting a little bit crouch over your phone or over your laptop okay so please shift your position a little bit when we move our body <laughs> that was confirmation from spirit something cracked but when we move our bodies, we move emotions around, okay? So it's really important to get into the habit of moving your body in order to let go of emotions. I feel like some of you would have really liked to be touched, have your face touched by your father. I feel like a lot of you would have loved to just have been that little girl that was like, you know, how your father sometimes can pick you up by the chin and look at you and do that um, gesture of tenderness. Like, oh, I love you so much. I would eat you up, you know? So there is this sense here that sometimes your fantasies of how you would have liked your father to be like, the image of your idealized father would overlay over the reality of the memories that you have of your father. Sometimes you would forget what your father was like and here I feel the need to take a very deep breath in. Wow, solar plexus energy pouring through. Yeah, this really deeply affected your confidence really deeply affected your confidence i feel like you might have unconsciously chosen people that were in some way deceitful or they might not have even been deceitful with the intent to to do something negative to you it was more like they weren't there or you couldn't rely on them you couldn't rely on them they weren't there that's what i keep hearing it's like where were you to protect me that's what I keep hearing. Where were you to protect me? Where were you when I needed you? So a lot of you had to strike out on your own. I feel like a lot of you established some very deep connections with um, authors or um, music writers. I feel like you have these very deep cultural relationships with men. So maybe you like a famous writer. You're very drawn to I don't know, Jonathan Safran Fowler. For some of you, maybe he wrote a book called Everything is Illuminated. Maybe you're drawn to that. I feel like some of you could have just finished reading a book by him. <laughs> oh God, what am I tuning into? Um, but anyway, coming back to this, maybe some of you are drawn to philosophers like Albert Camus. Um, so you kind of tend to attach yourself to these cultural images of fathering because you got to know your father through the realm of your mind, swords energy, the mind. And you feel that your relationships with men, when you connect with them mentally, are more intense than when you have that person next to you. So you could be very happy just to talk to a guy without physically being close to him. I think there are two groups here. Some of you are kind of protecting yourself from the physicality. Some of you could have spent a very long time not having sex with a man because of this, protecting yourself, preferring the world of fantasy, the world of reason, the world of words, rather than the world of action and body and physicality. And others, if you have a deep desire to merge with someone, to feel intimately safe with someone, but you're coming back to this, right? You're coming back to, I cannot trust. 
Therefore, I'd rather just leave things hanging in the air. I'd rather explore and take action, but towards exploring the world, towards exploring the Father in the realm of art, spirituality, in other ways. Um, I feel a lot of you are even preferring to watch pick a card readings and fantasizing about your divine masculine rather than genuinely making the effort to connect with the real person. And I'm not calling you out, not at all, my darlings, but I hope that these intuitive hits that I'm getting through your reading and with the help of terror are helping you understand your patterns so that you have a conscious choice over ah, hmm, maybe I'm doing this, maybe I could change it if I want to. It's really important to be conscious of these things so you have control over them and you get to choose what you want to do. But as long as a pattern is unconscious, it tends to rule us, it tends to trigger us, and it tends to push us into action that is not going to bring us benefits. It's going to bring more karma and more pain. So this is why I've mentioned that. So these are the cards and I feel that I'm called to kind of wrap it up here regarding your relationship to your father. So I feel predominantly this was an absent father and whew, I feel again that deep contraction in my, in my sacral chakra. So sacral chakra meditations, trying to just connect to your body, to your breath and sending a lot of white light, healing white light in the realm of your belly. Making sure you don't overeat so you don't stress your stomach are things that are going to immensely help you. So I want to see right now what is Archangel Michael's and the magic of you Oracle's guidance regarding what was the main lesson that you had to learn in the relationship to your father. Because we choose our fathers, karmically we choose our fathers. They are not necessarily the fathers that we want, they are the fathers that we need to fulfill our North Node. So we have here innocence. And it says, Dear God and angels, thank you for helping me see that all of your qualities of pure love and light are reflected within me and all others. Help me embrace my God-given innocence so that I may be at peace. And then we also have here energy healing work. Thank you for sending healing energy to me and through me for my own blessings and for all those around me. Thank you for connecting me to loving and high integrity healers and teachers of energy healing modalities. So this is why you're here. This is why you're connecting with me in this video. And I got goosebumps on my right leg. <laughs> As I was saying this, God, I love it when spirit does that. Whoa, and you got Maximus beautiful card right guys so it says here how can you feed others when your own table is empty so you saw me i only pre-shuffled the oracle cards but you saw me pull the tarot decks how beautifully do these two cards connect together the feeling like you're defeated like your cup is not empty like all life has been drained from you but look there's a horizon there waiting for you to just take the swords out of your back Get up, take a shower, wipe the blood away, walk into your happiness. So I feel that indeed the, the theme you might have felt like, you know, your childhood was taken away from you, like your innocence was stolen not through something harmful that your father has done to you, but through the fact that your father was not there, that you didn't have that presence in your life, like you had to piece him from other men, from literary men, from contact with authorities or institutions, from doctors, judges, priests, other male figures in your environment. But I feel that paradoxically, you need to give yourself that. You need to connect with the innocence that you feel your father has stolen from you by not being there. The lesson in this is to fill your own cup. You are a beautiful, beautiful person and inside of yourself is this inner child that is wounded. It is deeply wounded, but you've been keeping this child on hold. And I think it's really important to allow your child to come out and play 
And one way in which this child can play, uh, can play complain, see? Wow. Okay, so stop complaining. <laughs> It, this sounds like very weird advice for me to say at this point in the reading, but if you've been complaining about your father, it's really important to understand that your father was in this way with you, absence, because through his absence, he was supposed to teach you about yourself, about how it's, it's not about the father that you have externally, it's about the father that you integrate within your own self. It's about if your father could not hold you and make you feel like you're that lovely little child, that innocent, sweet, loving child, you have to think of yourself in this way in your father's absence. Does that make sense? So you are asked to heal that aspect of yourself. You are allowed to be playful. A lot of you, I feel, feel robbed of your childhood. Maybe you grew up with a single mother. Maybe you grew up with a mother that was mourning your father or a mother that, you know, was in a divorce proceedings with your father and, you know, you had some very odd custody arrangements so you could see your father from time to time but you mostly lived with your mother. And maybe you, you adopted that system of complaining about men not being there. And it's really important to silence that inner critic. It's really important to silence that inner critic, fill your cup, allow yourself to be playful, allow yourself to connect with the innocence of your heart. Your father was not meant to reflect your innocence and your beauty and your confidence back to yourself. You were supposed to find this within yourself in his absence. That is the biggest lesson here. And I think that right now, through tarot readings, through connection with spirit, you're doing this precious energy healing work that's going to save your soul. So, well done. Well done to you. <laughs> and I have here as well, some advice now from spirit. So, these are the empowerment cards, or at least this is how I selected them, with the intention to empower you. So I have an affirmation here for you and a goddess that is protecting you and the theme of what is about to come in your life and you are going to love this. Oh my God, you're going to love this. So we have here the following super attractor affirmation. I am kind and loving towards others while creating clear boundaries that protect my good feeling emotions. So for a lot of you, the tragedy was in the fact that without the father there to teach you how to stand in your self-respect, you were not aware of healthy boundaries up until a, a later point in time. So in your process of forming yourself, you allowed a lot of people in that were toxic and that kept repeating that childhood pattern of disrespect of not being there when you needed them nobody there to to rely upon this gave you a lot of anxiety and it ultimately put you into this hangman position where you said you know what enough is enough i'm gonna heal right now and i feel like a lot of you are still in that phase at the moment that's why you're here and i'm very happy to be your guide i'm super humbled about this so thank you for choosing me so clear boundaries. You're learning how to establish that at the moment because the more clear boundaries you have in your life, the more you kind of like pull that external image of a father. I'm trying to choose my words carefully here and pulling it in into yourself. It's almost like you, you forgive your father. You connect with your father by saying no, by drawing clear boundaries, by being your own authority. By becoming that father that you wish you had by becoming your own rock it's not up to other people to give you that respect it needs to come from within establish boundaries say no be patient don't give yourself respect don't give your body away to the first person that smiles at you i'm sure a lot of you don't do that but you know be careful be careful with your energy how you spend it i think you're growing increasingly more aware of your energy, how precious your body is, your womb, your, your energy, your positivity, and how nobody, nobody should mess with your energy. And look, I have here such great news. So the more you do this boundary work, this shielding work to protect your emotions, 
The more you forgive your father and you pull him metaphorically into your body, become that energy. You're attracting a lot of abundance and you're attracting so much pleasure. Abundance and pleasure. Feel free to pause the video and meditate on these cards right now. But this is what's coming for you. The more you do this work, setting boundaries clearly, confidently, and I feel like I want to rub my hair. So it's kind of like a connection with crown chakra as well, right? Connection with the divine. Unblocking your crown chakra because I feel like for years it's been overactive, but overactive in a negative way. Unblocking that crown chakra, stepping out of the hanged man, fully healed, and allowing those clear boundaries to make you feel positive, make you feel good. You're not abandoned. You never were. Your father taught you about how you can stand into your own authority, into your own power, and regain that beautiful sense of innocence, replenishing your cup to take care of others, just like a father should, just like your own father should. You're now healing yourself by becoming that energy and helping others, being there for them, as you would have liked your father to be there for you. And this is going to attract so much abundance and pleasure into your life. I feel like you're going to be an excellent parent precisely because of this experience. You're going to teach your children how to establish clear boundaries very early on. And finally, group one, I want to leave you with this gorgeous card. So we have here Rabia, the queen of saintly women. And these are the affirmations. I am in service of divine love. I move the way love asks me to move. That was the reading that I had for you, group one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're able to tune in again and I'm sending you lots of light. Bye. Okay, so we're flowing into this. We're flowing into group two. So group two, we have here the safety pin. And as I said with group one, I did a meditation to prepare for this reading. I felt like it was necessary uh, with all the Saturn energy in the sky. I feel like slow and steady is the best way to connect with spirit at the moment. And it really worked. I'm trying to remember what was the energy that I felt with you. Yes, you had the energy of, I basically saw a father that was very angry and that was shouting commands and that was complaining. So it's really interesting because you have a safety pin, right? A safety pin is supposed to protect you, right? It's supposed to bring things together. Like if you have a tear in your clothes, you put it back together by attaching a safety pin, but it's only a momentary solution. And what's most important about it is that it can sting, yeah? I feel like your father was verbally very, very tough. He could have been almost like a drill sergeant. If this doesn't resonate with you, feel free to choose another pile. But I, this, I think this is important for some of you out there. This is a father that would have very strong emotions. A father that could have been choleric, angry. Maybe a father that had a lot of Mars placements, difficult Mars placements in his chart. An Aries potentially, a very amped up Aries. Maybe squares to Pluto, squares Mars, squares Saturn. A father that could be cruel with his words. This is not a father that I think was physically abusive with you. This to me was just a father that would get red in the face and shout commands at you and would not take any form of disobedience. And he would get very passionate about establishing boundaries to the point where most of the time you didn't know like as a child, you, you, you perceive that why would he be so emotionally attached to that boundary if he's confident in establishing it? So this is a father that basically lacked an own sense of authority in his own life. He could have wanted to become a boss. He could have wanted to become a leader, but he was frustrated because he was just second in command or he was just an employee in a company where he would have liked to become the manager or the boss. 
So this is a father that had a lot of pent up frustration regarding his job and he would sometimes taking, take this frustration out on the family. He would shout at your mother, he would shout at you. Um, I feel especially a lot of you that are firstborns might have been through the situation and I feel that for some of you that were younger, this was a father that could apply physical corrections to you if you were younger and if you were older, he would primarily mostly shout at you. This was a father that, as I said, could get very angry very easily. So a lot of you learned how to repress communication. You are very adept at reading cues before you speak. You keep a lot of your truth hidden and you read a room before you're able to voice your opinion. I'm kind of getting the feeling, reminding myself of that period when I was teaching in an academic environment. I had a lot of students that were so careful and would read the opinions of everyone else in the room before they were able to voice something. And when they were speaking, they were speaking from such a place of wisdom, like they really thought over what they were saying. And this is primarily the sign of a person that grew in an environment that where a child would know that a misspoken word or a mispronounced word would lead to conflict, would lead to anger. So you're very careful about what to detonate in your environment and you understand that words have power, not only because your father kind of abused that verbal power over you by calling you names, by shouting at you, with, by shouting at you and you know your father should have paid more respect to your feelings and to your ears. Um, but also because you kind of interjected that and you understand that you too can say things that can harm sometimes because you grew up with that model in your family. So there is something here, the theme of communication, but I want to pull right now some cards from the tarot. Oh, the light went a bit brighter. So I think for a lot of you, this was a moment of deep awareness. And I'm really, really grateful to be able to facilitate that. So cars are falling to the ground. Um, I don't like doing this, but I am actually collecting them with my toes. Feet, feet. Maybe you were stamping your ground, stamping your feet on the ground. Maybe feet were important. Maybe your father stepped on your feet. Um, feet were important for some of you in the situation stamping feet maybe you would try to make a point by stamping your feet and then your father would shout at you or your father would stamp its feet creating these tremors that were making you feel anxious so the cards that i got for you from the tarot are the two of swords these just popped out together all of them the hermit And the Ten of Pentacles. So I feel like a lot of you grew up in an environment where you had a lot, you had plenty, you know, you, your material needs were satisfied. I feel like you grew up in an environment with a lot of relatives as well. Mm. But your father somehow stood out. I feel like your father was this kind of person that in the public space, at work, in relations with other people, they would be very calm and pleasing and, and quite... Um, oh, can I do this for you? Can I help you? And then at home, it's like they repressed that anger. They would collect all of these little slights to their ego that happened throughout the day. And then at home, they would explode because that was the space where they would feel relaxed and they would feel like nobody of importance would judge them. I feel a lot of your fathers thought that, you know, your the family members that they had around them were not important. So you grew up, as I said, communication, right? In a state of anxious awaiting for the bomb to detonate, for the next argument to happen between your mother and your father, for your father to come home and to just and then start raging. You never knew if that rage could turn into something more physically. So I think that a lot of you grew up with a state of mental anxiety. Um, it's slightly similar energy to group one but different i feel like a lot of you i'm just rubbing the corner of my eyes a lot of you maybe cried a lot and now your eyes are very sore about the situation or a lot of you 
could not even allow yourself to cry about the situations. Your eyes are quite dry. But there is something here about the eyes and that sense of needing to release that. Because whatever happened, it was not at all a fair situation to you. And as I said, we don't get the fathers that we want. We get the fathers that we need in order to help us fulfill our nerf notes. So you learned a lot about communication from your father, what to say and what not to say, how to control your emotions, how to deal with, for some of you, a rage monster. And you learned to be quite studious. You learned that the right information, the right knowledge can bring you a lot of power if handled wisely, carefully. Some of you could have um, very strong planets in the third house or in the ninth house or in the eleventh house. You're very good at communication, but you do it in subtle ways. Some of you could use nonverbal ways of maybe manipulating the situation so that it ends in your benefit. And that's mostly because you do not trust I'm carefully selecting my words here because I could feel like tension building up in the back of my neck as I'm saying this. You do not trust people's emotional reactions. You could be in relations where you back away very quickly at the slightest hint of conflict, at the slightest hint of, oh my God, there's going to be an emotional discharge right now. It could be a good one. It could be a person confessing their feelings for you. It could be a partner that just wants a lot of passion, you know, and wants to kind of unleash it on you. And I feel like for a lot of you, this creates that reaction of, Oof. because there is this part of you that remembers the father unconsciously, remembers that reaction of, Oof. the last time I had that, all hell broke loose. So a lot of you are quite studious, introverted, solitary. And in spite of the fact that you might be quite good at creating abundance in your life, I feel that you are having to deal with a lot of mental fear, a lot of anxiety regarding how to put emotions into, into words, how to deal with emotions, how to handle emotions. Um, a lot of you could be sarcastic, you could use sarcasm as a defense mechanism. You could laugh when you feel like crying and that confuses partners. That's a confirmation. I just slapped my moonstone ring on the table. So that's a confirmation. It's difficult for you to tune into the world of emotions or intuition because the moment when you try to do that, it's like, oh, uh oh, no, no, no. My father was very emotional, highly angry. You might associate emotions only with anger or something negative. When you hear the word emotional, you, instinct you instinctively think of, oh, negative. You might prefer the cool right light of reason because you can handle it better. You can handle information better. You can parcel it. Facts bring you a lot of security. But feelings scare you, remind you of that scared child that you were in those conversations with your father that were very, it was like a monologue most of the time. You couldn't even speak because it was his rage and everything coming at you. And just, I feel orders, orders, do this, do that, do that, don't argue, you know, dress up, put your shoes on now, eat up, finish up, come on, like a drill sergeant, like a coach, you know? So that's what I see for you. Incredible abundance for a life where you didn't have to worry about the material aspects, but a lot of fear, a lot of mental anxiety put you into this isolation because it's very difficult for you to tune into emotions. You might feel that like, with the safety pin, that emotions sting. But what stings is the memory of your father that needs to be released, cleansed, forgiven so that you can allow those emotions. I have a feeling that a lot of you are very emotional in this group. I wanna move right now to the Oracle card. And it's interesting, you're emotional, right? But because you're so emotional, you've learned how to not be emotional from the model of your father that was kind of showing you this negative model of expressing emotions. So you are much happier being the hermit. 
you kind of compensate it, overcompensate it in the area of reason and neglect it or repressed or shoved down your emotions. Because you don't want to be like your father. You don't want to be that negative role model. You don't want to go into a rage. But precisely because you are repressing your feelings, you are on the risk of fulfilling the prophecy of becoming like your father. So the important thing to do is to acknowledge your feelings, not repress them. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. So let's see right now. What do we have here? These are the cards that I pull for you from Archangel Michael and the magic of your oracle to show me what was the main theme of your relationship to your father. What is your father's role in your life? What were you supposed to learn from your father? And we have here, ask Archangel Michael to help you with this situation. And it says, Archangel Michael, thank you for assisting me with healing my paternal wounds. Please help me be filled with faith and peace all the time. The road to reaching that inner wellspring of peace, connection with spirit, is through your emotions. I'm kind of getting that there is a work, of, work your light card. I did not pull from that deck here, but I'm kind of getting that energy of there is a girl that looks over a shore and the only way in which she can go towards that bejeweled shore that she's yearning to be there is to just immerse herself in the water and water is the energy of emotions it is the energy of cleansing it is the energy of going with the flow of allowing intuition to overcome you of knowing things without knowing how you know them <laughs> twisted but true so we have here vertigo this is the other theme. Whatever you choose will be correct. And I think this is a lot about learning that emotions, your father taught you that emotions can be quite negative and they can be quite powerful when they're negative, but you need to learn on your own that you can master your emotions and you can both experience negative and positive emotions and there is a lot of strength in seeing both the negative and the positive aspects of your emotions i'm kind of getting like an itch in my left hand i feel like you need to give something you need to give more of yourself because the left hand is the non-dominant hand is the receiving hand at least for me because i am right-handed so you need to be more giving. The way to be more giving with others is to open up your heart. The way to open up your heart is to acknowledge your emotions and you shouldn't be afraid of your emotions. You should just understand that if that fear comes up of you connecting to emotions, of you um, seeing somebody emotional and you feel like you wanna run away, it's just because when you were young, you had this father that was just overly emotional, overwhelmingly emotional verbally abusive as well for some of you most of you so the sense of vertigo that you might be feeling from time to time is just your emotions are trying to connect to your reason you've been so much in your mind and so much feeling like i'm in control i'm in control the hermit is the energy of virgo control but you might have vertigo from time to time because past memories that are soaked in emotions want to come up to the surface to be integrated by your logical mind. So don't be afraid of the vertigo. Whenever you're getting this feeling like you're a little bit dizzy, sit down, be still, let the emotion come out. Do not judge it. Do not freak out. Do not medicate it. Let it pass through you. Be a clear channel. Cry, be angry write it down whichever way you prefer to process your emotions process them it's so so important for your growth it's so important and you're gonna feel so much better after you let the emotion come out there is a sense of relief because you release that psychic tension your unconscious poof, made a bubble it came up to the surface you acknowledge that bubble and then it disappeared no bubble is meant to last forever and fear is only an illusion. Don't, don't live in a world of illusions because it will not bring you towards that happiness that I feel a lot of you want to have in their life. Connect with Archangel Michael as well. 
feel free to say prayers, feel free to just summon him from time to time to protect you, to help you cut cords with the past. And especially a lot of you, I think, need to do some cord cutting regarding the emotional connection to your father. That is in no way saying that if you still are in contact with your father and you like him and you like to spend time with him, that's not to say that you're going to stop seeing your father or your relationship is going to go to bits. No, you're making peace with the old image of your father, the one that you had of him when you were a child. Because fathers and mothers grow up and they change. They have astrological transits that change them. I know it sounds crazy, but it, they do change. As we change, so they change, especially if you spend some time apart, when you come together to meet your father, you'll feel that the energy is different because the energy has shifted. So cleanse that old image that you have of your father, release that old pain, because it's no longer part of who you are now in the present and you're just carrying that baggage with you. So let me see right now the cards that I pulled for you for your empowerment. These are the oracle cards that I specifically set the intention. I want to empower this group after getting deeper into the relationship with your father and what was the main theme. So I have here for you an affirmation from the Super Attractor deck. And this one says, My greatest spiritual shifts don't come through force, they come through freedom. My greatest spiritual shifts don't come through force, they come through freedom. So if you've been feeling like in order to succeed at life, you need to push and pull and shove your fists and get angry, <laughs> shove your fists. I'm sure a lot of you don't do that, but maybe sometimes you feel like in order to push things forward, you need to take this again, confirmation. You need to take this approach that, you know, oh, I need to get back on the saddle. I need to push this relationship forward. I need to push this deal forward. I need to push my project forward. I need to, you know, step into the boardroom and, and shout a little bit at people just to energize them. No, you need to inspire people to feel that they are free, to feel that they can do whatever it is that they want to do. You need to give to other people what your father couldn't give to you, positive reinforcement that Sure, honey, you can do it. You're the best. I love you. No matter what you do, I'm always by your side. Even if you do mistakes, I love you. No matter what you say, even if you disagree with me, I'm still here for you. Wow, I felt a lot of you really needed to hear those words. And I can feel my throat chakra kind of blocking. <coughs> I feel like for a lot of you, this might have been an emotional moment. my biggest bottle okay moving on with the beautiful energy so if you manage to give this positive and reinforcement to yourself first and then to others this is your blessing a voyage look at this how gorgeous is that it looks like it's a ship made of a whale that is floating in ether you will feel lighter than you've ever felt in your life you could feel physically kind of bogged down, kind of heavy. Maybe you put on some pounds or you're having some issues shedding weight. But physical weight is also um, correlated to our emotional weight. So when we shed the emotional baggage, something beautiful happens. It's almost like our body kind of becomes relaxed, released. So you tend to, sometimes, most of the time, you tend to lose some weight as well as you drop the baggage you're being transformed and i feel like you're going to be able to travel a lot you're going to be able to broaden your mind um, when you release the fear that the world is a dangerous place full of angry men like your father was when you release the fear of being criticized you will be able to attain new heights speak to yourself very kindly use positive affirmations um, be encouraging, make, make maybe a 30 day challenge where you only speak of yourself with positive affirmations. I was kind of thinking of what word should I say, but there are so many different things you can say. Maybe pray in the morning or use positive affirmations. It's really, really important for you to silence that inner critic, which for most of you is the image of your dad shouting at you telling you that you're not good enough. 
We're telling you that, do this, obey my command. You don't have to obey. You just have to free your mind. And by this, you're gonna help empower other people to free their minds. There's gonna be this beautiful like, chemical process where the work that you're doing on yourself is gonna be projected outwards onto your energy. You're gonna attract better people and the things, the beautiful things you say to yourself are gonna be mirrored by those people saying that to you. And you're gonna reinforce them, they're gonna reinforce you. It's, it's gorgeous when, trust me, it happens, it can happen. And it's a really beautiful process. And then we have here this beautiful goddess energy for you. I want to leave you with this group too. So you have here Sara Lakali. She is the queen of the outsiders. She is a gypsy queen. She is adored by outsiders, gypsy travelers, explorers of any kind, especially those that don't have a nation, that don't necessarily have IDs. So again, it's breaking free from the authority of the father and stepping into your own authority, becoming this wonderful world traveler, exploring other cultures, not being bogged down by what your fa father thought was the right thing to do or the right thing to say. Some of you could be Pluto and Sagittarius and you could have a belief issue with your father. So maybe a lot of these arguments happen not because of your behavior, but because of how you or whom you choose to believe in. Unfunk your mind, let go of that inner image of an angry father and let Sarala Kali guide you in this process. These are the affirmations that she has for you. I have arrived. I am where I will always be, in love. So for a lot of you, you need to understand that as you travel and you broaden your mind, the roots of freedom, the roots of where you belong are solidly planted within yourself, within your body within your soul. And this realization, I hope, can only help you soar higher, go higher, closer to a higher vibration where you'll feel a bit more positive about yourself and you'll discover a lot of blessings and that things just magically work out and manifest with the power of your thoughts. Speak up and speak beautifully to yourself and to others. That's the key forward. I really hope you've enjoyed this. That's what I had for you, group two. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you in one of my next pick a card readings. They're all very different. <laughs> so we'll see what pops up next time. Bye. Okay, group three. Hey guys, how are you? Wow, so we are here with another midnight healing session. Um, I'm just going with the flow, I'm not editing this video, I just want to allow, create a safe holding space where we get to explore a relationship with fathers, father images, and how, what were the major themes and how we can overcome them, okay? So I pre-shuffled some oracle cards for you here, and I am going to pull some cards from the tarot, but I do feel the need to drink some water, sorry about that, I had a throat chakra block with pile number two so this is for those of you again sorry if i i forgot if i showed you the glasses or not it's for those of you that were drawn to the sunglasses and it's interesting because i did a meditation before coming live so before filming this video and in the meditation i worked on the chakras and for you for your pile i focused my intent on that and I basically saw this image of a very charming, very playful, very sweet, um, kind of like a heartthrob, you know, um, like a father that is very alluring, attractive, um, almost like I could hear the word like a playboy father, you know, like a, a, a madman about town, you know, a Casanova kind of father. Father that was very beautiful, Venusian, okay? So maybe he might not have had beautiful features, but he was Venusian, maybe Libra or Taurus energy. Very um, good at attracting opportunities, relationships, the attention of um, the opposite sex towards him. So this was a father that was very charming and very sweet but was also, well, a little bit truant. Um, not the most faithful kind of father to your mother. Uh, not there when you needed him. 
um, and a bit irresponsible. But he was very happy and very charming. A little bit childlike. So that's kind of what I'm getting for you guys. And I'm kind of getting like um, a shiver in my left leg. So confirmation for spirit. This is really important for some of you. But let's see what the tarot has to say as well. So I'm going to shuffle live for you from the tarot. Too many cards. I'm going to choose the top and the bottom. You've got like so many cards here. And I'm only going to choose maybe, yeah, these ones that came top and bottom and the ones that came face up. So we have here top and bottom and the ones that came face up. I feel like... <laughs> you were playing a lot with your father but that's mostly how you got access to him through play i feel like from time to time he would stumble home drunk coming home from a party or from an event and he would play a little bit with you or tell you a story before he would completely crash into bed or you would see him from time to time but like maybe he wasn't there for important things i'm hearing like he wasn't there for graduation i'm really sorry if that happened so we have here the High Priestess energy. We also have here the Five of Cups, which speaks of kind of focusing on the negative aspects rather than it speaks of a loss. It speaks of being cloaked in the sadness. Five of Pentacles. So we have two fives. This is your important synchronicity in this reading so far. And then we have the Four of Wands. Let me show you all the cards here. Sorry about that. So, I feel that this energy represents your mother. I feel for some reason your mother was quite a silent, sensitive person that would just take it all in her stride, would not has, ask a lot of questions, would not challenge your father why he was behaving like this. I feel like this was a mother that would just take it all in and just like, wow, he's a man, what can I do? You know how they are. This is a father that, uh, sorry, a mother that encouraged passivity. Oh, I'm getting here. Okay. I'm, that's why I was thinking, why am I speaking about the mother? It's a very codependent relationship. I feel like your father could have had some addiction. Maybe addiction to alcohol. Maybe addiction to womanizing. Addiction to partying his feelings away. Spending a lot more time with his buddies, co-workers, than with the family. And... I feel like he was in a very codependent relationship with your mother. They couldn't leave each other, but they weren't necessarily happy in the relationship. The mother provided a very strong anchor, physical, material anchor for your father. And I feel like your father provided, through his comings and goings, a necessary level of excitement in your mother's life, because otherwise I think she would have fainted. like. Sorry, I don't mean to sound so so brute or so cruel, but not fainted, faded away. That's what I meant to say. Faded away. Your mother could have struggled with depression. I see here the black pillar and the white pillar. She could have been great one day, not so great the next day. I'm hearing some bipolar tendencies as well. They are very interlinked. I feel like some of you that chose this group have sun conjunct moon or sun trine moon or you have some really good influences. It's like you saw your, your mother, the sun represents the father, our identity, our solar consciousness and the moon represents the mother, our unconscious, our private inner world. And I feel like when, when there are strong aspects between the sun and the moon, sun trine, sun conjunct, or sun sextile, you kind of tend to see your parents as a blend between the two. So you don't see them as, oh, my father is in this way and these are his characteristics. My mother is in this way. My mother has her own group of friends, her own job. My father has his own group of friends, his own job. You tend to see them as blended. And I feel to a certain extent you still do. A couple of you still feel like your parents are codependently enmeshed somehow. They've been together for ages. They are not happy, but they can't function on their own, each on their own. They wouldn't be able to function in the real world. 
so they have all their joint finances all their resources all of their habits kind of relate to one another but i think this has made you feel a little bit left out and i feel like there was this atmosphere of ha ha he ha 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 with your father always cracking jokes always being playful and charming but it left you feeling a little bit like but what happens when I'm sad, when I'm angry? Can't I express these feelings to my father? And I think most of the times when you were sad, when you were angry, when you needed your father to explain important things, maybe relationships with other boys or um, the meaning of life, uh, whatever thing you were focused on in that particular moment when you were having an emotional meltdown and you needed your father to explain something to you, you needed your father just to hug him, just to make you feel like the world is a safe place, he wasn't there. He just wasn't there. He was out partying, feeling good. And when he would come home, and if you were angry, or if you were in a negative mood, he would try to disassociate those feelings from you. So kind of push it to the side. Kind of make you feel like, nah, come on. Let's crack a joke, you know? Why so sad? Why, you know, put on a smile. Put on a smile. So a lot of you learn to cover your sadness. A lot of you are very good at having this kind of mask on because you had to learn how to do that through these repeated interactions with your father. But I feel like a lot of you are also very strong in your spiritual sense of self. I feel like a lot of you have a very deep connection to your soul. You understand your emotions much better than your own father was supposed to understand his own. And that's Primarily, I'm already getting into the, the lesson that you were supposed to learn from your father. I'll explore this in the oracle in a second. But I feel that you are able to build a very solid spiritual foundation in life. You're able to be very confident, very optimistic. You don't let things bring you down. Primarily because your father taught you how to repress those negative feelings and to move on, move over. But there comes a point in your life when you do need to get in touch with your intuition and you do need to tend to these negative feelings because i think what's happening for you in spite of the fact that you have a very optimistic mindset you're kind of not being yourself fully in your personal relationships and this leads to a feeling of alienation and isolation from your partner because you feel like you can't express your anger your sadness your frustration with the world you know we all have that when you come home from work and you want to complain and you want to bitch about everything just to let it out a little bit i don't encourage doing this every day because it's really negative energy but from time to time you kind of feel like having a good moan but i feel a lot of you are not allowing yourself to do so because you remind yourself of that father that was like hey no smile the world is a joke but it isn't for you, is it? So the way forward is to acknowledge those negative feelings. Let them come up. Cry, have one good cry over that spilled milk. And then move on, move on. Blending your intuition with your emotions, with your reason. So let's see now. I kind of felt like move on maybe might have sounded a little bit too move on from what move on from that image of you of being just a cheery young child of having to be cheery just to entertain your father because you're afraid that maybe if you weren't cheery and optimistic like he wanted you to or smiley you would lose his attention you are not going to lose the attention of your partners if you have a meltdown from time to time you need to learn how to express both your negative and positive emotions in order to create deep, real intimacy and trust with another person. And if partners reject you, they bring back that old wound that wants to be healed and acknowledged. So when you are ready, when you acknowledge it within yourself that you're both light and dark, you're going to attract the partner that sees that in you and is able to acknowledge you in your best days, but in your worst days as well. Your father was in that way with you because as I said with the other piles, we get the parents we need in order to fulfill our life path, our north node. We don't get the parents that we want. 
That's why we have friends. And that's why we are able to choose our soulmates. Thank God for that, to a certain extent, because some connections are fated, others require more free will. But these are the main themes of your connection to your father. So we have your protection. And it says here, set personal boundaries. Beautiful card. And then we also have here, it's time to leave this unhealthy situation. And it says here, Archangel Michael, what parts of my life do I need to focus on more closely right now? Thank you for helping me hear your answers and for giving me the courage to make healthy changes in my life. So as I said, I feel like you're afraid of your own darkness. I feel like you're protecting yourself from your negative feelings. And it's really, really important maybe to work with a counselor, maybe to slowly release these feelings by, you know, voicing some unfavorable opinions or maybe some criticisms in your personal relationships and test the waters, see what happens. Ultimately, as I said, if you keep protecting your partners from your negativity, from your shadow self, it will come up anyway and it might lead to the destruction of that relationship. But if you acknowledge that within yourself, yeah, I have certain defects. I like to complain about certain things. These are my pet peeves, you know. I can't stand certain aspects, but that doesn't mean I'm, a, I'm not a lovable person. That doesn't mean that I don't deserve love and I don't deserve your trust and your appreciation. So that's kind of how the internal dialogue would ideally fit in the situation and would help you heal. If you acknowledge that negativity within yourself and you bring it up to the light, allow yourself to be fully who you really are in personal relationships. Don't censor yourself. Heal that father image, that image of a father that was a bit of a jokester, a charming, dazzling man that would pull away his attention if you started crying or complaining or being angry. A father that, you know, would only require you to be in a good mood for him to give you attention when he was there to give you that attention. But heal that aspect. The way in which your father behaved was not necessarily the normal standard. Then again, what is normal nowadays, right? But let's just say it was just promoting you loving a certain part of yourself. Loving yourself in parts is detrimental to your health in personal relationships. So love yourself fully, allow yourself that gift yourself that you deserve it you deserve to be seen fully for who you are don't be afraid if you if the scales come up in your personal relationships ask your ask your partner to be patient with yourself and if they are the right one they will be if not well why waste your time with people that only love you in a part it's up to you so leave unhealthy situations, leave situations where you only have to be. I feel like a lot of you could be even in this love and light community, right? So you feel like negativity and confronting shadow aspects or being a little bit, you know, blunt and speaking your truth is like, oh, no, 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 I'm angering spirit. No, spirit appreciates you and loves you with all your flaws, with all of your shadow aspects. It knows you before you know yourself. It has created you, so it knows you. You can rest in the love. You can trust the love that spirit has to bring. But I think it's, as I said before, I feel that this is the main theme. In order to attract better partners, you need to acknowledge and accept yourself, accept your shadow self, accept that you can have flaws and allow a partner to appear in your life that can mirror that to yourself. Don't be afraid when that happens. That's supremely healing in your case. And it will heal your image of this father that only loved you in parts. So now, this is the best part of the reading. So I have here oracle cards. I set the intention when I chose these oracle cards to empower you. So I wanna give you some encouragement right now. You have here an affirmation from the Super Attractor deck. Okay, so look, how gorgeous is this? So 
So it says, my ability to receive is measured by how much I practice good feeling thoughts. My ability to receive is measured by how much I practice good feeling thoughts. How awesome is that? So in a sense, I feel like a lot of you might have been trapped by feeling that obviously if you're too negative, you might block the flow of abundance in your life because gratefulness is what powers this beautiful flow of abundance and prosperity. But allow yourself to have good feeling thoughts that stem from a little bit of a dark night of the soul. I'm not saying that you should put yourself in a dark night of the soul. That usually happens to us through a traumatic episode, at least in my experience and in what I've seen around myself. But connect with your shadow self. I feel that if you integrate that shadow self into yourself, you will actually find a source of happiness that is more deeply replenishing than the love and light one, the bubble into which you have fallen. And some days I feel that you are angry that you cannot uphold. Release yourself from that pressure. That's just your unhealed father image pressuring you to try to be happy and optimistic and walk over more difficult feelings like grief and loss and sadness and anger. Accept those feelings because they will bring you to that true love, light and happiness that you so crave to sustain in your life. Freedom. <laughs> Beautiful. So I love this card. It's so gorgeous. It shows the sparrow that has flown away from its um, group and it's striking out on her own. Allow yourself to be a really interesting explorer of the unconscious depths, okay? Do some shadow work. Definitely get into some shadow work. Read about Jung. Um, explore Melanie Klein's work, especially. Have a look on some of the videos I created. I think I have a couple that are about the shadow self. I even wrote a blog about that. If you don't like my videos or enjoy my readings, although you are here, so hello. <laughs> um, but if you prefer something else, there are so many resources out there. You are supported. And it's time for you to leave this unhealthy coping mechanism. Positivity at all costs, but repressing that shadow self. And God knows what happens when it comes up, when it sneaks up on you unexpectedly. And I want to leave you with this, group three. Lakshmi. This is the energy, the goddess that is protecting you in this period. The goddess that you can turn towards to help you heal your paternal wounds. So we have here Lakshmi's affirmation. She is the goddess of pleasure, of abundance, of the arts. Her affirmations are, I choose to feel abundant. Wealth is an inside job. If there were any blocks to your prosperity, it's because you were trying to push this fake sense of love and light. Maybe just thinking it without feeling it, because feeling it requires you to get deeper into some negative feelings first. Exploring your anger, exploring your sadness, exploring even some feelings of feeling a little bit abandoned by your dad, or feeling like your dad it's almost like a tyranny of optimism. That's kind of what I hear. When a parent only wanted you to be happy all the time and cheery and confident. It creates a false sense of optimism. It's not one that is felt, it's one that is thought. So blend the two. Allow those negative emotions to come up to the surface and then allow this inner peace to flow from your released heart chakra to your crown chakra, balancing the intellect with the emotion. I feel called by spirit to stop here. So this is what I had for you. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next one. Um, yeah, I hope it was healing. Let me know down in the comments. Bye. Oof. Okay, guys, so I think we're approaching about yeah okay so we're approaching almost like three o'clock in the morning wow um but guess what i'm actually feeling so 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 good 
and it's i love the holding space i've created in this reading for you i hope it transmits i hope this energy transmits towards you i know there are some weird shadows here but it's not about how i look this video right this video is about the healing the soothing comfort i can imbue it with and in order to do so i'm really sorry but i need to drink some water because speaking for two hours it's like oof, reminds me of my teaching days okay so this is for those of you that were drawn to the hand gel and as i said with the other piles um when i was preparing for your reading i felt the need to meditate and i meditated on the chakras and with your group with the intent that i had with the hand gel i saw this image of a man it was actually the most i wouldn't say creepy but it was a man that was very emotionally detached very dry staring at you from a distance a man that couldn't it's almost as if a man that couldn't touch you and was kind of speaking in a low tone he wasn't very dominant but he wasn't very see i'm getting like this very confused feeling you have very strong confused feelings regarding your father there could be some neptune links in your chart you could have neptune in capricorn a lot of the people of my generation have that there is a sense here that the father is somehow unapproachable unattainable he could have been a person that is of a high public standing there could have been something that happened to you in childhood that is shrouded in secrecy something in relation to your father i won't go so far as abuse physical abuse that was kept as a hush hush but for some of you i think this will resonate very strongly and i'm feeling oh attention in my sacral chakra as i'm saying this so yes for some of you it was a deep deep wound regarding trust and something that piled up the emotional baggage onto you from a very early age. So you could have struggled with overeating because you were eating up your feelings regarding the situation. You were trying to know, you were trying to understand what happened, what happened to you. That's what I keep hearing. And your father was very remote and detached and had a very cold look in his eyes almost sometimes. It's, it was a very creepy feeling that I got, the creepy image that I had of this father. Some of you could have a very normal father, but he's very kind of like, I feel like he's looking at you like almost like that, you know, like he looks at you from, from above, like he's, his head is somewhere up and he's looking like you like that. There is a very steely kind of energy coming from the father. So let's see what the tarot has to say that now based on the into. See, it's kind of like my speech is blocked. I feel like you couldn't talk to your father. You couldn't express yourself. A couple of you even felt, because I'm, I'm touching my eyebrow, a couple of you could have even felt like controlled by your father. Like there was a lot of control very little emotional connection and a lot of like authority or power plays between you and your father again your father could have been a very important figure like a judge or a policeman or a teacher somebody of a high social standing a lawyer a doctor but quite cold at home this atmosphere of sternness and silence and study and Definitely not a playful father, not a playful father at all. But here are the cards that I fell out for you guys. Wow, okay, so the first card that you have is the star. Then we have here the six of cups. Your second six. So this is significant for you. This is your synchronicity in this reading. The Six of Pentacles. And finally, we have Justice. Whatever issue you've experienced in your relationship with your father, it's going to come up to the surface. 
whether this will happen as you're doing some sort of counseling, therapeutical work, whether this is happening as you're listening to tarot readings such as this one, whether it might happen as you're reading a book or watching a movie and thinking, oh my god, why do I resonate so strongly with that character and whatever is happening in that character's life, I feel like it's, it, will, it will make you feel like there's a very strong pull towards that person's story. Follow that, go down that rabbit hole. It will help you remember what has happened. Justice is coming into your life. You will not leave this plane. And again, I'm touching my eyebrow. Interesting. Control. There's a lot, a lot of control, a lot of keeping things under wraps. Because the eyebrows frame the eyes and the eyes are the windows to our soul. There is some sort of like karmic control of your soul in this situation. You're not meant to know up until a certain age when you are able to process whatever it is that happened. For some of you, it could be that this father kept an inheritance from you. It doesn't have to be physical abuse. Maybe your father had um, an affair with another woman and it went for years. And maybe your father has another family with that other woman. Maybe your your father went to prison for a while, he disappeared from your life for a while, you never know what happened to him, and then he all of a sudden returned and people behaved as if nothing has happened. There is an air of secrecy, an air of bizarreness happening, but you will get the justice. And the cards are so positive here. I feel like, especially in this situation, yeah, so as I said, your father could have been a person that was a very good social standing. I feel like similar to, was it group two, if I remember correctly? You had a father that, you know, your material needs were taken care of. You didn't have to worry about that. I feel like your mother was very nurturing and very kind to you. I'm not sure how she was with other people. And your father publicly was quite charitable. I feel like you were quite okay for money, quite well off for a while at least, if not for the entire duration of your life. And potentially in childhood, up until the point when that event happened, you had a good connection to your father. You reminisce often regarding those moments, but something happened something that your unconscious is blocking you from remembering something that kind of gives you shivers from time to time so it could have been something that your father has done to you or something that happened in your father's life and it's a secret and you don't know about it but you've always had this niggling feeling you know it especially those of you who watch my channel are quite intuitive people you know it you know there's something up something is wrong you will find out what it is okay very Neptunian energy. Your father could have been a Pisces. Heck, your father could have been a priest as well. So maybe that's why a lot of secrecy. Hmm, interesting. So let's see, I'm really tempted to go into the themes. I'm just gonna go with the flow. So what are the main themes of what your relationship to your father has taught you? What were you supposed to learn from your father? I'm really sorry if I repeat myself, I had to repeat it with the other pals, but I did mention that we do not get the fathers we want, we get the fathers we need, and we need our fathers to teach us, even through brutal life lessons, how to embody the energy of our north node, our destiny, what the dharma that we have to fulfill in this lifetime. So let's see, wow, for you we have samadhi perfect acceptance, even complete surrender. I'm reminded of Akilanda, the goddess of complete surrender, the never not broken. Wow, okay, so it's getting more clear. Oh my goodness, oblivion. Oof, I got such a chill, especially in my legs. Oblivion, open your arms. And you see how she has these flowers strapped to her back? I am really tempted to say, and I'm really sorry if this, I hope I'm not triggering any of you, but you are here for a reason, right? So again, 
If it triggers you, allow the emotion to come up, release it, release the pain. There is a lesson that you need to learn from that experience. Take the lesson, release the pain. Your present is safe. You are no longer in that situation anymore. For a lot of you, this could have been physical abuse, sexual abuse. Oof. Don't worry. We're clearing the air. We're actually changing. We're doing a lot of shifting of the energy at the moment in this in this reading and that is the intention with which I'm creating these readings and that's why I'm creating them for you my darlings because I genuinely want to help you heal so I'm going to burn some Palo Santo and the fire is burning away all the pain it's cleansing it's cleansing the it's bringing warmth into that very cold creepy memory it's bringing warmth and it's purifying it it's making you feel whole and innocent and complete once more. So letting the fire and letting the smoke purify you. It's all okay, it's safe. You're safe here. You're safe and whatever has happened to you situation that required you to be still and completely surrender taught you such an important spiritual lesson about letting go about growing beyond your reach you might have felt it that exteriorly everything was putting you through pain putting you through terror but internally spiritually you are growing by leaps and bounds so Congratulate yourself for being a survivor. Take the lesson and release the pain. Surrender. Spirit loves you. It has always loved you. And part of the reason why this has happened was so that you can tune into. Tune into spirit. That was the only way it could connect with you through that unfortunate event. But you are loved we have here the person you're asking about is trustworthy so you will fall in love in this lifetime and not with a person like your father that will repeat the same abuse or distance or coldness or secrecy this will be a person that you will trust fully do you see all the light in this image i feel like whatever you've been through and i feel like from all of the piles your pile is the heaviest that's why I had to do some cleansing. You are going to be so rewarded for whatever pain you have had to endure. And I feel like a lot of you have successfully entered the stage of Samadhi, even potentially before even realizing this. Maybe when you were very young, you had this moment of complete surrender. And this helped put you on your darn path. Many of you could have Scorpio North Node, Pisces North Node. Some of you even Cancer North Nodes or North Nodes in the eighth house. That's so intense. You're supposed to learn, or maybe Saturn conjunct the North Node. You're supposed to learn through a lot of pain and effort. There's so much light after each of these lessons. You're blessed. So it's a limit, it's a test, and it's a blessing. Limit, test, and blessing. Some of you could have Jupiter conjunct Saturn. A blessing brings an obstacle. An obstacle overcome brings a blessing. Dear Archangel Michael, thank you for helping me have faith so I can open my heart wider in my relationships. I am grateful for your protection, ensuring that only trustworthy people are in my life. This fills me with so much hope and so much light for you. I could feel how heavy your heart is, but you don't have to. You can release it. Release it. Let's release it together. Take a deep breath in. You can even do the lion's breath, right? Stick out your tongue. Lion's breath. Okay? 
I'm not able to do it that loudly because it's three in the morning and my neighbors will get upset on me. But I think you got the picture. You're so loved. There's so much light in this reading, okay? So, this is the good part. I pulled these oracle cards with the intent of empowering you. And as I looked at empowering you, it said 1 hour, 44, 44 seconds, 44 minutes, 44 seconds. So 4444 four, four, four. is another synchronicity for you. You also had 6-6, six, six, okay? So you're moving from the material concern of the body, the pain, the karma to the spiritual realm, the realm where spirit has your back. So I have for you an affirmation from the super attractor to help you in this process. And it says, I can decide today to recalibrate my energy and commit to love and joy. I can decide today to recalibrate my energy and commit to love and joy. Releasing, releasing. You have to do so much releasing in this lifetime, I feel. The more releasing you do, the more joy and love are entering your life from trustworthy people, people that won't keep secrets from you and people that definitely would not shackle you or abuse you. We have here, are you ready? You're gonna love this. New beginning. It's a beautiful valley. It's the light of dawn, which I think I'll be catching up very soon here. Um, it's a new beginning, a new beginning, fresh new energy, beautiful golden white light cleansing you, cleansing you of the pain, cleansing you of the hurt. And then we have here fulfillment. Fulfillment. Life is a peach. Peaches in Asian culture are considered to be bringers of prosperity and abundance. And you have the moon here. Everything will be round. Everything will be complete. Everything will be as it should be. Pieces from your past are going to be brought back to the light. You will get the justice. You will start to feel more hopeful. And when you look back on your past, you will understand the lesson. You will take only the good parts. And you will use those good parts to help propel you forwards. You will know what has happened. You might be broken open by the realization of what has happened. But if you surrender to it, as you learn to do ever since you were a child, you let this realization wash over you, it will lead you down towards a new beginning and fulfillment. And I want to leave you with this gorgeous goddess. So this is your protective goddess. This is the one that you can ask for help in helping you heal father issues. She is Quan Yin. Okay, one of the most well-known Asian deities. And it says here, she's the goddess of compassion, by the way. And it says here, I recognize suffering in order to release it. Curiosity breeds compassion. So whatever happens to you in life, try not to react from the trigger of that old pain, but maintain an attitude of curiosity. Hmm, this person came into my life. Let's observe, let's see how they are before you completely cut a connection with them. Hmm. Things are a little bit chaotic in my life at the moment. Let's figure out what the lesson is here. That's what it means by keeping an attitude of curiosity. Okay, curiosity breeds compassion. And the more healing you are in your relations to others and how patient you are, how you allow them to just be, you allow yourself to be. You're being patient with yourself. You're being loving with yourself. I feel like there was so much releasing happening in your reading. I really, really hope this helped. Thank you so much for watching group four. I hope this was healing. I'm sending massive amounts of light to you. Please do some cleansing and smudging after this reading. Maybe burn some white sage or some incense, whatever you have around the house. Or just take a shower with iodized salt water. It's going to help you cleanse yourself after this reading, especially if you've been crying or did some purging with me. In this reading okay i send you so much love bye